What's up everybody? Hope you are doing well and taking care of yourselves at this time. Today we're going to talk about traditional Hmong weddings and the cultural etiquettes at a traditional Hmong wedding table. Hmong weddings are special. It's a beautiful celebration of two people coming together to join as one and two families also joining as one. There's a lot of things going on usually. The people at the table, the people outside, the people just standing around. There's a lot of things that's happening that makes this event so beautiful and so fun and lively and vibrant. If you've ever been to any traditional Hmong wedding, usually you'll see a long stretch table, primarily filled with men who are doing things that you're kind of scratching your head like, what the heck is going on? It just looks like a lot of men just sitting around and drinking beer or drinking whatever and laughing and having a great time. But usually there's a lot going on. And today we're not going to talk about like what usually happens at the table, but we're going to talk more about like if you were at the table, what are some of the social etiquettes or cultural etiquettes that you have to know in order to help facilitate this wedding? So at this table, first things first, let's talk about the positioning. Usually there is the hao pao chong and then there is the kang chong. Hao pao chong is usually where the two mei gongs are. And if you don't know who these two are, just look at the two folks that usually hug each other or they're like best buddies and they're talking. And so those are the two mei gong, the two facilitators of the table and the wedding overall. And at the end of the table, depending if you're Hmong Leng or Hmong Tle, there are usually two more people, Zi Lu Mi Gong or two other people who sit to help facilitate the table as well. So Hao Pao Zhong, and then at the end of the table, Kang Zhong. Hao Pao Zhong is the front of the table, Kang Zhong is the end of the table. Number one, if you're at the table, you cannot do what I'm doing right now. You cannot put your elbows on the table or arms on the table or rest your face on your arm like this and look all tired like this. You cannot do this. That is a no-no. The belief is that they learn your body gesture and okay, the belief is they will go home like you don't so at a traditional Hmong wedding, if you are at the table, you cannot put your arms like this on the table. You cannot go like this, even if you're tired, or you cannot be crossing your arm. What should you be doing? You should be sitting upright. Your arms usually are like this. Your legs and feet are on the ground. There's no crossing at all. So if you ever go to a traditional Hmong wedding, pay attention. You'll see a lot of people just kind of sitting like this and their arms are nicely rest like this. Yeah, that's what they would say. I personally experienced this and I know a lot of you have questions about this too. When the drink starts flowing, what do you do? So what's important here is the positioning of the table. Hao Pao Zhong, the front of the table, is where the two Mei Gong are, Zito Mei Gong Du. And then at the end of the table is Kang Zhong, the other Zi Liu Mei Gong or the other two folks that help facilitate the wedding. It always starts from the two Mei Gong and it flows down the table. So if the drinks are flowing from this direction to over here, this is what you need to do in terms of how to drink it, which hands to use. Usually the person next to you will tell you what toast this is and then you would receive it. When you receive the drink, you have to acknowledge it by telling the two Mei Gong that the drink has arrived in your position. Many people say this differently, but I'm going to teach you a very simple way that I use all the time. You would say, Basically, it means your toast has arrived and I'm going to drink it on. So this is the part where a lot of people are confused about which hand do I use? How do I drink it? What do I do? Which one's first? Because there are penalties at the table. If you drink it wrong or your body posture is like this, like I talked about earlier, there's penalties. The penalty is obviously you get more drinks or there's something involved at the table. So I'm going to let my dad talk about this and then I'll continue talking more about like what happens afterwards. มาลอตายาตอลอฮะกอฮอกอไลชิงมาถอกตุกกันสื่อระยาออโตเมกงยาปีจาจาตัวมาปยาหาตานุนอเปอชงอกูมาเปสดละฮอกอไลชิงอะ
เจ้าจู่เล่าตัวลูกเกิดเป็นคนเดียวคนเดียวปู่เจ้าตัวก็มาเล่าเล่าลุ่นดังตั้งเจ้าตัวแต่สิทธิ์เขาก็เด็กก็จะเขาเราก็จู่จื้อเราก็ตัวเกิดเป็นคนเดียวก็จะเขาตัวนั้นแต่ลูกเจ้าปุ๊บพลังรู้แล้วก็เขาตัวก่อนนะหนูก็เลยมาเขาอยากจะหาตัวหนึ่งจังหวะเขาเจ็บปวดตาโอ้ยกูจะป้องก็เขาลูกเจ้าเล่าเชื่อก็เขาก็อารมณ์ chỉ có mà lấy nó khai cũng là họ lo nó chỉ có tàu lâu có alu rồi có tàu họ có alu có chứ tôi được khai mình tôi được có mà họ alu gì mà được mà họ được lũ đó nè thế thầu cứ cái cái họ cái cái chủ à mỗi chứ tôi có thuộc về hoàng đế cứ cái cái họ mòn đó nè cái chỗ ta lũ chơi phong plan rồi là của họ tôi coi nó nè mà cái này mà họ có lũ lũ ổn định nó mình cái này họ lũ ở cái nó mình rất là nó rõ lên đó so here I have my healthy apple juice poured into a flask to use for demonstration. And as my dad said, you know, how to know 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 how to Following the flow of the stream, basically. Like if the stream is going this way, you have to drink this direction. So if this is my plate here, and I received it here, I have to drink this one first. Because the flow is this direction, I'm drinking over here, and then I will go back. I know it sounds counterintuitive, but that's traditionally how it's been done. Now, I drink it according to how the flow is. If I drink with my right hand, the belief is that I'm sending it back. That's not how we do it. If the flow is this direction, I have to drink over here so that it flows down this direction. I drink the first cup first, and then I move to this one. So, my right hand is my pouring hand. This is direction. I have to pour with this hand. This hand is the drinking hand. So I'm gonna drink it first, and then I'll pour it to show you. So you thought too, like I will pick up my plate and acknowledge it and say, so the example my dad used And then I would turn to the person next to me, get that person's attention, and then say, You acknowledge it, and you tell them what toast this is, and before you drink it. That is custom as well. So here I drink, starting from the front, and then the one behind it. My pouring hand is my right hand, since the flow is this direction, I will hold the plate if I need to, and I drink this one first here. And then the one behind it. This apple juice is great. Mm. After I drink it, I have to pour the next one and pass it down. Again, this is the part we have to pour correctly. The flow is from Hapo Chong, the front of the table to the end of the table. So I use my right hand. This is the flow. I'm going to pour it as if the water is flowing down the table. How you pour is important. There are two cups again. You don't pour the one from the back, you pour it from the front because you always want to keep moving the stream along. I know it sounds counterintuitive because it would be this direction, right? But the belief is the first one here and then the one right behind it. So here, I would pour here. And then I would also pour here. After I'm done pouring here, then I would pass it on to the person next to me. I've already acknowledged it and I let the person know that the drink is coming, so I give it to them. Another thing I want to mention too is when you pour, you want to make sure you pour it to the fullest point. Even if you them, you them, but that's okay. As long as to the rim and to the top, you want to make sure that you pour all the way to the top and that what you pour here is never empty. If I pour this one here and I pour this one here and I'm empty and I'm only halfway, so pour it until it's completely full. Or if you notice that your can is you know almost empty don't use it get a fresh new one so when you pour in one pour you can fill both cups completely to the rim of the top one other thing i want to mention too is after you're done drinking you never use the word tang ka hao and you're finished you never say gu hao tang at all you want to say gu hao ming le this is a traditional Hmong wedding and we don't want to use anything that will represent negativity and so a word like tang to be finished we don't want to use that because if the groom and the bride are just starting off their wedding, we don't want to use words like that where the wedding's already done and their life and, and time together has already ended. That's not the point. So we don't want to use the word tang, we use the word ming. Wu hao ming la and then come on, we'll pass on to the next person, okay? Now if you're the lucky person who gets dragged by the arm, you resist and you fight, yet they get you to the end of the table. Again, hao bao zhong is with the me gong or gang zhong is where there are zi lu me gong or two other people to help facilitate. If you are one of the two people at the end of the table, there are some things you gotta pay attention to as well. The first thing is, pay attention to what the Tito Mekong are talking about. 
when they give a toast, usually they'll talk about like what toast this is for. So like the example that my father just shared, Luno Ya Sing Jiao Bong Plan. So you also have to remember that so that when it gets to you, you can acknowledge that and say, now depending on the choice of beverage at the wedding and whether or not you want to continue drinking, there's a few different ways of how you acknowledge the toast. The first is the easiest. Simply you acknowledge and then you drink. You would say, using the same example, and then you would drink it. Using the right etiquette again, if you're on the right side of the table and the flow is coming over here, drink with your left hand. If you're on the opposite side and drink flow from this side, you would drink with your right hand. If you want to test the mekong or you want to spice things up a little bit and add more drinks, you may ask the mekong them like, how do you want to drink it? You would say, You would ask them, how do we drink this? They might respond and say, meaning just finish it and put it there. Or the tito mekong might say, And if you don't understand what that means, you might drink it, finish it, and then send an empty cup back to them. Why? Because that's not what they mean. But what they really mean is how fill up that cup with, with whatever choice of beverage you have all the way to the rim and then return that cup to them. You yourself have to personally walk that cup back to them at the front. Obviously, there's a lot that goes on at a traditional Hmong wedding and this is not going to be the exact way that you're going to see it unfold at a wedding that you attend. But this is more of a general sense of what you can expect at a traditional Hmong wedding and some of the cultural etiquettes that you are expected to uphold to help facilitate this wedding. So as a quick recap of today, again, there is none of this. Don't put your arms on the table or don't cross your arms like this when you sit at the table. Make sure you sit properly. Number two is make sure you acknowledge the toast before you drink it. In the person next to you. You got to make sure you acknowledge both before you drink it. You would tell it using the same example. And then you would turn to the person next to you and say, And then you would drink it. So make sure you acknowledge before you drink it. Number three is pay attention to the positioning of the table. That's going to help you with which hands you use. So again, if is to this side of my direction, this is the hand that I use to pour, and this is the hand that I use to drink. So this is the hand that I use to pour the drink. Again, this is the one I use to drink. And I drink in this fashion, in this order. Number one, I drink the one in front, and then the one behind. So if I'm gonna use this example right here, if the drinks is flowing this direction, I drink this one first, and then this one. So I would use this hand to pour, right, later on. But first I drink it with this hand right here, I drink the first one, and then I drink the second one, and then I take my pouring, and I pour the front one, and the one behind it, before I hand it off to the person next to me. Again, this is not comprehensive in any way, and this could vary depending on which wedding you go to. Whether Mong Tlai or Mong Lang or other types of Mong people out there, this changes with the different communities and the different cultures within the community. I hope this makes sense, and I hope it gives you a general understanding of some of the social and cultural etiquettes at a traditional Hmong wedding so that you yourself can help facilitate a beautiful and fruitful wedding for your family and friends. As always, take care, be well, Mashinji Klo. Peace out.